Hello everybody and welcome back to another GoLang tutorial. So in this video we're going to talk about mutable versus immutable data types and then a few strange behaviors that some data types in GoLang exhibit. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing I want to show you is kind of a primitive example of something we've seen before and I just want you to take a guess at what's going to happen. So if I say y colon equals x like that and then I say y equals 7 and I go fmt dot print line x y what is going to print to the screen is my question for you when I run this code. So I have the variable x, I make that equal to 5, I set y equal to x, and then I change the value of y to 7. So what is going to print out? Well, let's have a run here and just look at it and then I'm going to talk to you about why this happens. Okay, so we get 5 and 7. Now that seems pretty straightforward, I'm assuming 99% of you guessed that, but why? Well, when I say variable x is an integer of value 5, and then I assign y to x, what I'm really saying is y is equal to the value of x, which in this case is 5. Then I say y equals 7, so I change the value of y. And when I print this out, obviously we get 5 and 7. Makes sense, great. Okay, so keep that in the back of your head that this worked, we understand that. And that is mostly because this is what's known as a immutable data type. So we have immutable and mutable data types and immutable data type means not changeable and a mutable data type means changeable. So when I say y colon equals x, what I'm really saying is y is equal to the value stored in x, which makes it equal to five. This line of code does not bind x and y together, meaning that any change to y affects x and any change to x affects y. That's not true. But now what I want to show you is a different example using a mutable data type as a slice. So I'm going to say var x and I'm going to say int like that equals int 345. So what I've said now is let's make a new slice of x, uh, it's slice of ints and it has 3, 4, 5. And then what I'm going to say is y colon equals x and I'm going to say y 0 equals 100. Okay, so now what do you think is going to print out to the screen? Does me changing x change y or does me changing y change x? Are they bound together somehow? And if so, why? So let's run this and have a look. That's strange. So we actually see here that I printed x and then I printed y and nowhere here did I change the value of x, right? I x was just equal to 3, 4, 5. All I did was I set y equal to x. I modified y and somehow that changed x. Now that's because a slice is a mutable data type, although that's not the only reason. And some of the behavior of a slice, which I'll discuss to you later, is that when I say y is equal to x, what I'm really saying is that y is equal to the slice uh, that x is pointing to. So what that means is that x and y are really just pointing to the same variable, so the same underlying variable. And if you change x or you change y, you change both of them. Now I'm going to draw a big example to really illustrate how this works for you in a second, so don't worry, but that's the basic idea behind this. Now that is known as a mutable data type something that is changeable. Now this is weird because there's some mutable data types that don't behave like this, but for now what you can understand is that when we use a slice and when we use a map and we do something like this, uh, what we're really going to do is just make another name for that map or for that slice. So when I said y colon equals x, you can almost think of this as just y being another name for x, which means that if I modify y, I modify x, and if I modify x, I modify y. I've kind of just made, a, I don't want to say a copy, but just another pointer to this underlying slice. So any change to X or Y will change this slice, which will in turn change both of them. Again, I'm going to draw an example in a second, but this behavior for our current understanding applies to slices and maps. So if I put a map here, so if I actually go map string int, and then we'll make that equal to map string int int and let's just do hello colon three and then what I do is y colon equals x and I say y um, you know why 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 not uh, equals 100 let's print this out and see what we get now let's have a look and we get map hello three y hundred map hello three y hundred so me modifying y here modified x right notice that that's what happens so when we use a slice and when we use a map, this behavior can be expected that when I just assign y, 
equal to the variable x or equal to whatever the original map was all i'm really doing is giving another name to that map or to that slice and any modification to either of these variables will change both of them right and if i go here and i change x and i just add a key let's just do the string seven why not is equal to seven uh let's have a look at this now and you'll see that that will change y as well so notice that both of them get that new key seven inside of them Okay, so that's how that works for maps and in uh, slices. Now, let me show you this with arrays because arrays are a bit different. So if I go and I make an array, which is a fixed length, remember, of ints, and we'll change this to just be two here. And let's just put uh, a few ints. So we'll do three, four. We need two ints in there. I say y colon equals x, and I say y zero equals 100. And we print this out at the bottom of our screen here. Let's have a look. Then what we get is three, four, and 104. So when I assign y equal to the uh, equal to x, which I'm doing here, this does not follow the same behavior I just showed you with those, um, what is it, slices and maps. In fact, what this actually does is make a copy of this array, stores it in y. So now when I modify y, I'm not modifying x because y points to its own copy of this array, three, four. So that's something important to understand. This is gonna change based on what data types you're using. But for now, just understand that the only ones that behave weird, where you, ch you can change both of them from different variables is uh, the maps and the slices. Now, an array is actually a mutable data type as well. So a slice, a map, and an array are known as mutable data types. And what that really means is that they can change. Now, the reason they can change is because, well, I can do this. I can say y0 equals 100. I am modifying this type without actually creating a whole new thing. I'm just modifying one value inside of it. And same thing with a slice, I can do that. And same thing with a map, I can do that. So that's what mutable stands for. Now, mutable doesn't necessarily dictate the behavior I've just shown you here, uh, but it's something to, important to understand that a mutable data type can change where an immutable data type cannot. I can't just do like if I have, you know, let's say z colon equals nine, I can't just do like z plus six, that doesn't change z uh, to be equal to 15. I would have to reassign the value of z, so z equals z plus six, or z plus equals six to actually change its value, whereas here I can just modify specific parts. So now let me hop over to my drawing tablet and I'm gonna show you why this actually happens. All right, so I'm on my drawing tablet now and I'm just going to do a little example to show you what actually happens on our computer's lower level and kind of behind the scenes when we write the code that I just illustrated to you. And this is hopefully going to explain to you why we get that strange behavior with slices and maps or we're not just making a copy, but we're actually pointing back to that same original slice or same original map. So let's have a look here. Let's go X colon equals let's just make a slice of ints. This is just for example purposes. And let's make that one, three. Okay, so we have x is equal to that. Now let's write y colon equals x. And let's write y zero equals 100. And then let's do x zero equals 100. And let's go through all these lines and see what actually happens. Okay, so on the right hand side of my screen here, I've drawn a little box that I've labeled RAM. Now this is my computer's memory. And what I'm going to do here is show you what actually happens in the computer's memory when we execute these lines of code. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is not an accurate, complete depiction of what's actually going on. This is a very high level understanding. The point of this is just to give you some kind of illustration and visual as to why this behavior that I've discussed actually happens. So please don't assume that this is like the perfect representation because that would take a lot longer to explain. Okay, so when we execute the line x colon equals the slice int one three, what happens? Well, there's two things that actually happen here. The first thing we need to do, and I talked about this when we talked about slices, is we actually need to make the underlying array for this slice. Now, I'm not going to do that here, but you can imagine that the first step is actually to create an array of size two with one and three inside of it, and then make a slice that points to that array. Now I'm not gonna make the array, I'm just gonna imagine it already exists, but the first box that we're gonna draw in a RAM, so the first thing that actually gets entered inside of there is some box gets labeled with some numeric digit. I'm just gonna label this um, like three. We'll just say this box's ID is three because each box in our computer's memory or RAM um, has what's known as like a label or it has some ID. It has some numeric value that represents it ideally. So we have that. 
So we'll say, okay, box three. And what this is going to be equal to is exactly this slice. So it'll be equal to a slice. So we'll just put this in here, int, and then one comma three. Okay. So we make a box, it's labeled some random thing, and then it is equal to the actual value that we're storing in the variable. Then the next thing we do is we make a box. I'm going to label this box X because that's the variable name that I've had here. And then inside this box, I actually put the address or the label of the box that stores the slice. So notice here that what I've done is I made two boxes. I didn't just make one box that said X and was equal to the slice. I made some box which was labeled something doesn't really matter what it was. Then I made another box that was labeled this variable name and it stored the value three inside of it. Now three corresponds to where the slice is that X is holding. So this is kind of our link, right? So X goes to three, three goes to three, and that gives us our slice. So whenever we're accessing or dealing with X, we first have to get the value out of X. And then we have to grab wherever that box is to get the slice that we're actually going to deal with. So I hope that makes sense. But this is the basics in our computer's memory. Great. So that's this line of code here complete. So now let's do this one. Y colon equals X. So when we do y colon equals x, what happens is we copy the contents of x into y. So I make a box called y, and then inside of here, I put whatever was inside x, which was 3. There we go. So now we have this same link, right? Because I've just copied whatever x was storing. So since x was just storing the link or the address or the box that has the slice in it, now y is storing that too. So when I want to access this slice, well, what I do is I go and I look at the value inside of y, and then I look at that box and then I get the slice. So a very similar thing happening when I use Y. So now let's look at ha what happens when I do Y zero equals 100. Well, like I just discussed, if I want to modify a value or I want to change anything or access it, I first need to look in the box Y and see where that slice is being stored. So this slice is being stored in box three. So let's go to box three, which is right here. And let's make this 100. So let's change that first value to be 100. Great. Now, what happens to X? Well, X is still pointing to this box. So that means that I have modified X because X is pointing to this box. I modified this box. So in turn, I modified X. And that's the basics behind how this works. Instead of storing a value like in the slice as two separate things inside of both X and Y that have two different values and can change, it's just being stored in one location. So whenever I modify that location, anything that's pointing to that location will in turn be modified. So that is why X and Y get modified. Now what happens when I do X zero equals 100? Well, sorry, this should have been X one. Let's imagine that's X one. Well, then I would come here to this box and I would modify this to 100. So in turn, I would modify Y because Y is pointing to that box. So that is kind of how that works. We have that pointer and that, that's the idea behind why that actually operates. Now this works the same for maps. So you can imagine that if I just change this to a map definition, uh, we get the exact same result happening in my computer's RAM if we're doing something like this. Now let me show you an example with a immutable type. So something like an int and show you what happens there. So I'm going to redraw RAM. We'll just make a little short one. This will be a much quicker example. And on the side of my screen here, I'm just going to say X colon equals seven, Y colon equals X, and then Y equals nine. So when I do this, what happens in my computer's RAM, and I'm going to go faster here, is I actually make a box called X and it just stores the value seven. So rather than having this kind of pointer system that we had before, we just store the value directly with X, right? So X is seven. Then what I do is I say Y colon equals X. Okay, great. So I say Y and I copy the contents of X into Y. So now I put seven here. So Y is equal to seven. Notice how I have copies. I have two sevens here. It's not just one seven. So when I change Y to be nine now, so let's we'll scribble that out. Y becomes nine. It does not affect X because they're storing the value directly inside of them. Now, if we had a situation where we were storing that value in its own box, like say that box is labeled one and we put seven here and these both had one in them, right? Then if I was changing this, yes, I would change both of them. But that doesn't happen with ints, with strings, with floats, with booleans and with arrays as well. Those data types follow what I just showed you where they just store copies of themselves. So when you assign Y colon equals X and it's one of those data types I mentioned, it just copies the contents into a new variable. It doesn't just point to where the contents are. 
So I hope that made sense. And that is pretty much my explanation of mutable versus immutable data types. Now I'm going to show you one last thing um, that hopefully should make this even more clear just with a function. And this is something common that you might see. All right. So the example I want to show you now is what happens when I make a function that accepts a mutable data type like a slice or a map. This isn't going to apply to arrays, just the ones that follow those weird behavior that we discussed before. So let's say func change first. Let's say that this takes some int slice. So let's actually say, sorry, slice int, and it doesn't return anything. But what it's actually going to do is just change the first element of this slice. So it's going to say slice zero equals a thousand. Nice. So now inside of here, I'm going to make a slice. So I'm going to say var x um, int slice equals int three, four, five. Okay. And then I'm going to call change first and I'm going to pass x. And I'm going to print X before and after. So I'm going to say FMT print line X and then we'll copy this and we'll put it here. Now just have a look at what's happening. We have this function change first, takes a slice of integers and then changes that first value to be a thousand. Then here we print X, we call change first, we print X again. Let's look at this and see what happens. Okay. So we get three, four, five, and then a thousand, four, five. So me passing X through this function, I was actually able to modify X down here. Now, the reason for that is because when I pass X in as the argument or the parameter or whatever you want to call it, what is really happening in this function is it says slice is equal to X, right? It says the slice variable becomes equal to X, whatever that's the value I passed in, right? And now we say slice zero equals a thousand. Well, we're doing the same thing as the example where I showed you that I assigned y equal to x. Since slice is simply equal to x and x is equal to the pointer to this slice, well, what I'm doing is I'm modifying x and I'm modifying slice because I'm modifying that underlying slice. So when I come back down here, just because this function was in a different place, it doesn't matter, I still modified the value in x. So this is something that you can do. You can modify slices. Um, and maps and a few other data types that we haven't mentioned yet from functions. So I can make functions like change first or delete last or something like that, that will modify the contents of whatever you pass in without actually having to return a value. So I didn't return a new slice. I simply modified the existing slice and that changed it out here and anywhere else that it was being referenced or had a variable assigned to it. So with that being said, I think I'm going to leave the video here. I know this is a confusing topic, so feel free to leave some questions if you have them. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.